you can quickly create a sprint burn down chart in Excel in four easy steps. If you stick until the end of this video, you'll learn one sneaky hack that I use to present this to management during my own project huddles. If you'd like to download this sprint burn down chart template, you can download it completely for free at alvinthepm.com forward slash sprint down. Step one, set up your data table. First, we're going to create our data table that will show the information for the ideal work remaining, actual work remaining, and the sprint days that they correspond to. So let's open up a new Excel workbook. Before we do anything, let's format the text font and the size that we'll use. Press Ctrl plus A to highlight all the cells, then let's select the text font for Arial and choose the font size for 12. We're first going to create the headers of our data table. So cell A1, we'll call it our sprint day. Cell B1 will be ideal work remaining in story points. And cell C1 will be the actual work remaining also in story points. Once you've typed in the headers for the data table, highlight all the columns, double click on the edge here so that it resizes automatically. Since it takes up quite a bit of space, let's use the wrap text feature so the text spills onto the next line and then we'll resize our cells appropriately. Let's go ahead, let's do the sum formatting, you know, and adjustments to the column sizes. Let's now make our header have a dark red background color with a white text font. Let's adjust things as needed, making the columns a little bit bigger so the text that we'll be adding has enough space to it. Let's use our mouse to left click and highlight all the cells from cell A2 up until C11, then click on the button for all borders. So it creates the outline for our table right here. We'll populate this with our information later. Now step two is to create our story points table. So let's go ahead, let's use our mouse to highlight the cells from A13 to B15 and click the button for all borders to create our table outline. And cell A13, label this with the words total number story points. Below that in cell A14, label it with the words number days in sprint. And in cell A15, label this with story points to complete per day. To make this table pop more so that it's more visually engaging, let's highlight the first row and make it a light purple color. The second row, let's make that pop with a light green color. And the last row, well, let's make that have a light bluish color. Feel free to tailor this so it fits exactly what you're looking for. And voila, everything is looking not too shabby so far. So let's start filling out this bad boy. For the purposes of our example, let's say that our sprint has 10 days in it. So it's a two week sprint. And from past experience, let's say that we know realistically that our software team can complete 40 story points in a two week time period. So let's add those numbers into the table. Knowing just these two numbers, we can calculate how many story points our team must complete per day if we're going to complete all of our sign work on time. So here's the super easy magic formula. Take your total number of story points and divide that by the total number of business days in your sprint. So type in equal sign B13 divided by cell B15 and then hit enter. Our team needs to complete four story points every day to complete all 40 assigned story points by the end of the sprint. Can the team do it? Well, we're going to have to find out and see. Let's go back to our data table above. Let's number the sprint days from day one all the way to day 10. Feel free to drag and drop the numbers so it automatically populates here. And now let's start filling out the column for the ideal work remaining in story points. In cell B2, type in equal sign and then click on the cell for the total number of story points. That way, there's a hard reference that's embedded inside of your table. For sprint day two, type in equal sign, then click on cell B2, which is the cell right above it, and then type in the minus sign. Move your mouse and then left click the cell for B15, which has the number of story points to complete per day. After you do that, type the keyboard shortcut key for F4 so that it locks in the value and includes a dollar sign before the B and then another dollar sign before the 15. This will be helpful when we drag and drop this formula down the column. Press enter and you should get the value that 36 story points should be remaining on day 
two. Since we locked in the value using the keyboard shortcut for F4, move your mouse to the bottom right corner of cell B3, then drag and drop it all the way down to cell B11. So by this point, this is what you should have now. Let's go ahead and fill out the column for the actual work remaining in story points. For day one, this should equal the total number of story points that you've been assigned to complete, which is 40. So type in equal sign and cell B2. For day two, let's say that we were only able to complete two story points. So we have 38 story points here. And for day three, let's say that we only completed one story point. So we're at 37 story points. But on day four, we were able to slightly increase our output and the team completed three story points. So we're left with 34 story points still remaining to be completed. And let's say that today is day five of our sprint and we've completed four story points today. Then we'd have 30 story points remaining. We haven't completed day six through day 10, so let's leave those cells blank for now. That way I can show you what a sprint burn down chart still looks like if work is in progress. Now step three is to graph it. Graph the data from your table using a line graph and line markers. To do this, you have to first select the data that you'll be using in your graph. So using your mouse, left click and select the cells from B2 all the way up until C11. You want to include the cells that you didn't type data inside because over time you can fill out this data and your graph will update automatically like a refresh. Now move your mouse to the insert panel at the very top. Under the charts panel, select the button that shows two lines on it. Click it and choose the option for line with markers. And voila, just like magic, we have our graph with the two lines plotted onto it. What I like to do is to make the graph bigger so that I can easily see what I'm working with and make changes faster. So let's make the graph bigger by moving your mouse to the bottom right corner and resizing it to fit your needs. Now step four is to optimize the graph. This is where we'll format all the different parts of this graph so it pops and looks more professional when you have to present it in front of management and other team members during your daily huddles. First things first, let's add the titles to the chart and the X and the Y axes. So to do that, double click your mouse inside the chart title text box. And let's type in here, sprint burn down chart, May 5, 2025 to May 16th. 2025. For you, if you're following with this video, feel free to insert your own dates inside this text box. Let's go ahead, let's update the text formatting so that it's larger and looks more engaging. Personally, I like my chart title to have aerial font size with a font size of 20, and then I'll bold it for a heavier emphasis. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and add the horizontal and vertical titles. To do that, left click on the chart itself and you should see these three icons to the right side of it. Click on the plus symbol and you'll see a chart elements pop up up here. Check mark the box that says access titles. And when you do that, the titles for the X and the Y axes will appear just like that. Before we do anything, let's format the text for these titles so it's Arial with a font size of 14. You can choose whichever font or font size that you like. Just be consistent with what you use or whichever text color and text font size that your company prefers for its best practices. Ultimately, it's up to your discretion. Now, after you formatted the text for each of these two titles, title the X axis so it says Sprint Day. And then we'll go ahead and we'll title the Y axis so that it says Work Remaining in terms of story points. Next up, we need to format the legend. I don't know about you, but I don't like it when the legend says Series 1 or Series 2. It just sounds blech. But changing it is actually quite easy. Left click the legend so it selects the legend box. Right click your mouse and choose Select Data. This is the part where a lot of people can get easily confused. So please pay attention here. In the left column for legend entries, left click on series one and then click on the edit button that's right above it. In the new pop-up window, your cursor will be flashing inside the box for series name. If you look at the series values, it says that this data set is for the data from cells B2 through B11, which is for the ideal work remaining. So under series name, select cell B1 to reflect this title and then click okay. And in a split second, 
you should see the name auto populate in the left side of the window. Let's repeat the same step with series two. Choose series two and for the name, let's pick cell C1 and then click OK. And then another OK to close out the dialog box. And voila, our legend is correctly populated. All that's left to do is to format the grid and the lines. I personally like having the background lines on my chart to be less visible so that it doesn't clutter the chart and distract it from the data points. To do that, double click on one of the horizontal lines in the chart so it shows a pop-up dialog box to the right hand side. Under the paint bucket tab, go to the feature called dash type, left click it, then choose the option for the round dotted option. It will be the second choice in the window and under width, update it so it's size one point. For me, I want the line still present on the graph, but not overly visible. So it has a very clean cut look and appearance to it. For our line representing the ideal work remaining, let's make this a dotted line instead of a solid line. So it will be easier to compare the two lines together as time progresses with our sprint. To do that, double click the blue line and in the pop-up window to the right, go to the paint bucket section. Under the dash type, choose the option for square dot, which is the third option in the drop down menu. Choose that and let's increase the lines width so its size is also a thicker width of three. That way, the actual work line matches the same thickness as the line for the ideal work remaining line. With the orange line that represents the actual work remaining, let's make this line width to have a width of a three also. To make our graph 100% complete, let's also add in the data tables to our orange line. Left click it to select the orange line and then right click your mouse and choose the menu and then the sub option that's called add data labels. The values here are kind of small. So to make their font size bigger, left click on one value and this will automatically select all of the values in the line. Go to your text font size and let's increase it to be font size 14. I like to rearrange the numbers so that they don't interfere with the line itself. And there you have it, my friend. This is the sprint burndown chart showing the work that's remaining up until day five. Oh, and don't forget, you can download this exact sprint burndown chart template completely for free. Alvin the pm.com forward slash sprint down. But how would this look if you were actually updating it in real time? Well, it's pretty easy. Aren't you glad you're watching this video to find out all of my secret strategies? On day six, for example, let's say that we completed five user stories. So in cell C7, type in equal sign followed by C6 minus five, and we're left with 25 user stories. And if you look on the graph to the right, the graph has been automatically updated with this new data point. Let's go ahead and let's populate the rest of our data table as if our sprint is being completed by our team. So we'll enter the numbers for 16, 10, 6, and 3 for the rest of the sprint days. And now our sprint burndown chart shows all the work that's been completed for the entire two weeks from May 5 to May 16. If I have to present our sprint burndown chart to management, I like to use one neat hack. Here's what I do. I love to click the chart. Make sure that you've selected the entire chart so that the outline box is selected. Then type control plus C to copy it. Then I open up a new slide in Microsoft PowerPoint and I type the keyboard shortcut for control plus V to paste in the slide. I'll make the image bigger so it fits right in the middle of the screen. And this one slide is what I'll show to management. And because this chart is directly linked to the data from Excel file, it actually updates in real time. So for example, currently the last two data points are showing six and three story points are remaining. If we change them to be 10 and six, instead the graph in the PowerPoint slide will also update automatically. Did you see how the graph update automatically with these two data points? How cool and how easy is that to use? And typically when you're sharing with leadership, you're usually giving updates on other aspects of your project. So having it in one slide is incredibly helpful to show the status of your sprint burn down chart. If you're stuck with me this far, then I have a bonus gift for you. If you give me the next minute, I'm going to teach you how to analyze your sprint burn down chart. So you'll never have to worry about it 
ever again. Whenever you're reviewing your sprint burn down chart, your goal should be to answer one question. How close is our actual work following the ideal work line? In our example, the ideal work line is a dotted blue line, while our actual work is a dark orange color. If our actual work line is above the ideal work line, then that means we're behind schedule. And if that's the case, then the team might be encountering some obstacles or need to adjust their pace. So in our sprint example, from days one through day six, our team was significantly behind schedule. And I'm marking it on the graph here with a bi-directional blue arrow here. And I'm also going to be labeling it with the words behind schedule so you can see it more clearly on the graph. So again, from days one through day six, the team was behind schedule because the actual work remaining is greater than the ideal work remaining. But if you look at the graph's trend after day six, do you see a difference in how the blue line crosses over the orange line on day seven and day eight, the team was able to increase their output. So on day eight, the actual work remaining went below the ideal work line. And that means that the team was ahead of schedule. But wait, on day nine, there was no additional user story that was completed. So the team might have been experiencing some major roadblocks, closing out a few user stories or finalizing testing efforts to meet the definition of done. As personal advice from my experience, if during your sprint, you're noticing that the team's actual remaining work is consistently above the ideal remaining work line, then the team may need to reprioritize tasks or address the technical issues and roadblocks that they're experiencing. Now, while it's important to know how to create a sprint burn down chart, it's actually very important to know how to create a risk assessment matrix so you can manage a project's risks. So please watch this video next to learn how to create a risk matrix in Excel the easy way, and I'll see you in the next video.